So good morning. I, it's my first time uh, speaking on Zoom like this, so I'm really excited. Um, we won't be able to meet in person for a while, so we're going to start virtual small groups starting today. So I hope our junior kindergartens to grade twos were able to meet with teacher Jackie this morning at 930. Um, I'm going to meet with the grade three and fours right after my message. If you click on breakout rooms, there is a room there for you and you can meet me in there. And our grade fives and sixes are going to meet with teacher Jason at 1 p.m. If you guys didn't get the link to these meetings, you can email me and I'll give them to you. So let's pray before we start. Jeremy, Father, we thank you so much, God, that uh, we can meet like this over Zoom and nothing can stop us from praising and worshiping you together as a community. There are so many things to be thankful for. We're thank you for, thankful for this community, for the Zoom, for our friends, for our families, for our health, and for Jesus. Father, as we listen to your message this morning, may you anoint my lips as I speak, but also open the ears, the hearts and minds of every single person who is present here, that we would hear your message, your truth, understand it and believe it and allow those seeds of truth to be planted deep within us. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, so. Who here likes stories? Now, I can't see everyone's little square, but if you're listening to me and you would want to respond to me, you can do like the high five or something on your little screen. So if you like stories, you can put that. Um, and you know who was an excellent storyteller? Jesus was an excellent storyteller. And so today in our, in our message, we hear that Jesus taught in parables. And so what's a parable? I don't know if this is a right uh, reflection, but the parable is a story. It's basically an everyday kind of story with a spiritual meaning. And Jesus today, we hear, he spoke in parables. He taught people in parables and he taught them about the kingdom of God. And so let's see what he's going to say about it. But before I tell you about what he said about it, I was thinking, why don't we talk about kingdom of God? What is kingdom of God? It basically means God rules, God's reign, God's sovereignty, God's authority over all creation. And so where is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? It is anywhere where God reigns, everywhere. And so it's not really talking about a place like Bridgeway Church or like a land or a country like Canada. It's talking about where God reigns and that is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is here. And I know when we look out, we don't see the kingdom of God. We're like, it doesn't feel like the kingdom of God. I don't see it, but that's because there's still sin in this world. And when Jesus comes, he's going to make this kingdom of God perfect and complete. And so let's see what Jesus says about the kingdom of God. He says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. He said, a man planted it in the field. It is the smallest of the seeds, but it grows taller than the garden plant. It becomes a tree and the birds come and build nest in it. Have you guys seen a mustard seed before? It might not literally be the smallest seed, but it's so small, it's tiny. But when it is planted, it grows into this huge, big garden plant that looks like a tree. And so, um, so when Jesus told this story, people knew what he was talking about. You know why? Because there were these plants everywhere. Every day, people went out and they saw these plants. And so they knew what Jesus is talking, was talking about. So boys and girls, he's not talking about a mustard seed turning into a big plant. He's teaching them something very, very special about the kingdom of God. And then he said, the kingdom of God is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all the, through the dough. Boys and girls, I don't bake, but I saw my mom bake a bread once. And the flour was like this, and the yeast that she put in was like this. And she put it in, and it made the dough rise, and it grew so fluffy and puffy. And so can you guys hear a, a, a common theme in these two stories? 
Yes, it's growth, right? Both of the seed and the yeast started small, but it grew into something big. So the kingdom of God grows and is growing. And then Jesus said another parable. And he said, the kingdom of God is like treasure hidden in the field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then he, in his joy, he went out and sold all he had and bought that field. You might be asking, why didn't he just take the treasure? Well, in Jesus's day, if that land didn't belong to you, you can't just take the treasure. And so they would buy the land that had the treasure in it so they could keep the treasure. That could be one explanation. And then Jesus said one more example. And he said, the kingdom of God is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went out, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Children, if you found a treasure, if you found something that you can't compare anything in this world to, what would you do? Would you ignore it? Or would you try your best to own that treasure? Now, through these parables, Jesus was teaching these people something very important about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God started with Jesus. And it's here because we recognize that Jesus is our king in our lives. And he is ruling and reigning. And you know what is the coolest thing? Is that for everyone who believes in Jesus and who commits their life to Jesus, they become part of God's kingdom. We become kingdom people because we are sons and daughters. So we are to live like kingdom people. We are to live like king people of light, right? We are to act like it, speak like it, think like it. And we're supposed to reflect him, right? So what can we do? We expand the kingdom of God by sharing who Jesus is and his love for them and what he's done. He came to rescue the sinners, taking away our sins, our shame, and our guilt so that we can be in relationship with God again. So God's kingdom is going to come in fullness and in perfection one day, but it is here. So boys and girls, what I want to share today is the kingdom of God is here in the hearts of everyone who believe in Jesus. It's here and we get to be part of this kingdom and we expand this kingdom. So boys and girls, it is growing and it is precious and valuable, just like the pearl and the hidden treasure. So I pray that we would all understand and know how valuable this is and how blessed we are that we can hear this message and hear about the kingdom of God and be part of this. Let us pray. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much that we can be part of, uh, be, you invite us to be citizens of this kingdom. Father, we just pray that we would continually get to know you, grow in you, become more like you, Jesus, and that we would expand this kingdom here through everything that we do through our lives. We thank you so much for your love um, that is unfailing and unconditional. We ask that you would continually just remind us of who we are in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.